Okay, okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about something I'm super passionate about. So I'm going to be talking about how I healed myself from the inside out from my hypothyroidism and with that how I regrew my hair. When I was struggling with my hypothyroidism, I lost so much hair. How you feel and how you're doing on the inside is going to manifest on the outside. So I'll insert some pictures throughout this video that will show just how terrible my hair really was. I also want to give a disclaimer that I am not a doctor. I don't want to tell you these symptoms or tell you how I was feeling and have you turn around and go, oh, I have a th thyroid issue. Let's get into the video and I will share with you all my tips and tricks on how I grew my hair longer, how I handle hypothyroidism. I also want to say, um, I am gonna talk about medication that I supplemented um, to help with my hypothyroidism because there was no way I could have done it without but I do want to emphasize that getting on a prescription or an RX is not going to solve your problem with anything. Jumping on a prescription is a band-aid. I have the biggest pet peeve of people who are like, oh, I have anxiety. Oh, I have depression. Oh, I can't focus. Oh, I need to calm down. And then they go to their doctor and they say, doc, prescribe me an RX. And they don't do the work internally to fix it. They don't create a healthier lifestyle. Um, they don't address the root problem. If you're looking for a quick fix for your hypothyroidism or a magic product or pill that's gonna make your hair grow long and healthy, this isn't it. This isn't the video because anything worth having doesn't come easy. As a result of me putting in three years of work and really changing my lifestyle, I now have, can reap the benefits of a healthy pregnancy, healthy hair, healthy skin. So I want to share everything I did and hope that you find extra motivation and encouragement. Don't go <laughs> slab a band-aid on your problems with an RX, okay? Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> if you haven't watched my video on when I struggled with an eating disorder, I will link it. My thyroid my health, everything took a toll. When I got diagnosed with it at 24, I was shocked. I was like, what? I'm so young. It was a big slap in the face. Like, Caitlin, let's address your lifestyle and your eating habits and your workouts. With my eating disorder, my thyroid got messed up because I would not eat for a full day and then I would binge and like, the crazy mental side of it and the physical side of it really played a toll on my thyroid. I remember I got to a point where my hair was falling out in clumps. I would change the sheets and there would be clumps of hair in the bed. And he'd look at me and be like, how do you even have hair on your head? And I look back at photos and compared to now, I didn't. I had no hair. I was balding up in here. Um, my hair, the, just the integrity of it, you could tell it wasn't healthy, wasn't shiny. It was very, very thin, short. And honestly, like I got, I had a full year where I was having regrowth and it looked like I kind of had like a mullet because so much hair fell out. And then when I regrew, you know, it's like I had this like whole top section that was just like so much shorter than everything else. But I'll get into that. It was not a cute look. <laughs> Along with the hair falling out, I could not get out of bed. Not like I could go to sleep, but like I physically couldn't move my body. It was so hard to make the bed, to get out of bed, to work out, to go on a walk. It was like straining. I just remember I would take some caffeine, take some pre-workout or something, just to get me to do an intense workout. Because also at this time, between the yo-yo dieting and the crazy eating patterns, I wasn't eating well. And when I was 
working out, I was trying to make up for what I was eating. I was exercising and doing HIIT every day, sometimes two to three times a day. I was trying to kind of overcompensate. That in conjunction with the weird eating and just putting my body through so much stress with extreme exercise. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with HIIT, but if you're doing it every single day and you're a woman, I'm sorry, it's it's gonna throw your hormones out of whack. From a health standpoint, I wasn't at my best, and then it showed up with my thyroid. So, you know, I'm just kind of, at this point, a mess, and I'm really anxious, and I'm really focused on this eating disorder I'm battling. I go to my doctor, and I just break down. I remember I'm crying to her. She's like, you know what? Let's test your thyroid. So no surprise, it came back. My T4, T3, and TSH were all very, very low. Um, very good indicators of hypothyroidism. And she said, let's get you on some medication. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm scared of medication. She's like, you don't really have a choice. You can keep feeling like this or you can start on something. We'll start you on a low dose. Initially, the medication did really help. Um, and it was kind of that extra motivation I needed at the time to be like, you know what? I need to get my shit together. It's not about my body anymore. It's not about how I look. I did a bunch of things that really changed my mindset. And once I changed my mindset, I changed my lifestyle. I did a lot of research on my own because I, like I said, I don't like to just throw an RX in the mix and be like, okay, that's it, I'm not gonna do the work. No, I researched and I wanted to do the work because I wanted to feel my best. I didn't wanna just hope this RX would work. And this is over the course of three years. First tip is have a healthy diet. So I had read up that gluten, dairy, and eggs could be a trigger for hypothyroidism. I went and got my blood drawn and it actually turns out that I was intolerant to all three of those. Um, as well as beef and kidney beans, which is really random. I nixed those out. Now, taking those out while I was in the midst of an eating disorder and trying to eat healthy was very difficult for me mentally, but I kind of had to draw a line in the sand and say, you know what, this is only temporary. I just wanna see how I'm gonna feel. And there were times that it did flare up my binge eating and my purge cycle. I really addressed my diet and I started eating balanced meals. I stopped skipping meals. I stopped saving my calories. I stopped trying to do super low carb. Um, and I started incorporating more whole foods. I, like I said, this took a long time. It wasn't just a quick overnight. I'm like, oh, I'm eating healthy. It, it took a lot of practice and a lot of work but now I eat a lot of whole foods and I enjoy them. The second tip would be to stop beating up your body through stress, through exercise. When we exercise, it puts stress on our bodies and that can be a good stress. But when you're doing HIIT every day and you're raising your adrenaline and you're maxing out your heart rate too often, it's going to wreak havoc on your hormones it's going to not help your thyroid. So I was already in a very stressed state of my life, mentally, and then I'm adding this stress of exercise and my thyroid's whack, and yeah, it's no wonder, like I was feeling like shit. I started to get into weight training at this time and I started to get more into walking and not so much running and not so much hit. Again, this was like a long process and a big mindset hurdle to go over because I always wanted to be sweating and maxing out my heart rate. So stop doing that. Still don't train that way. Focus and foundation of my workouts these days is walking and lifting heavy weights. I will incorporate some cardio or some HIIT, but it's like one, maybe two times a week. I'm also not working out for hours on end. 20, 30, sometimes 40 minutes max. Now get into more of like the hair stuff and how I grew my hair back healthy because a very common side effect with hypothyroidism is having your hair come out in clumps. I'm not talking like here and there. Let me tell you how bad it was. I said before, it's in the sheets. My husband had to 
snake out the drain once a week all over the house. We at the time had a dog that shed a lot and I had more hair in the house than the dog. It was awful. It's not a fun feeling. It's very disheartening. I also, in healing my thyroid, wanted to focus on support my hair. I took out my extensions. At the time I had a row of um, natural beaded rows. Nothing against those extensions. In fact, I'll tell you, I have one row in now, but I'll get into that. <laughs> I took out my extensions because I didn't want any unnecessary or extra stress on my hair that was already at such a fragile state. It was already falling out. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna put a shades on it. Shades is just like an all over color and I just kept it dark for three years. I didn't touch it as far as color goes. I tried out some products, like some more like natural products because I didn't want anything that would be like a hormone disruptor, nothing with a lot of fragrance, nothing with sulfates, nothing that was gonna dry out my hair. I'm just gonna say there's not a magic product out there. I will share a product here at the end that I love. Basically, I was just being very gentle with my hair. And again, I'm going to reemphasize this was the, over the course of three years I had not cute hair. Next is I didn't apply heat to my hair and you know, I still don't. I curled it for this video. You guys, I should just like, I should just be me. <laughs> I never blow dry or curl or straighten or anything to my hair. So less heat. Also, I don't use a lot of products on my hair. I know there's so many products in the industry right now, so many products on the market that are like, this will help with frizz, this will help with curl, this will help with, you know, it's overwhelming. And if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So just keep that in mind. These are the products I use in my hair, guys. There's just three products. And I only use these once a week. So it's just the Old Plex shampoo. Number four, um, bond maintenance shampoo repairs, strengthens, and hydrates all hair types. Okay, that's what it's done for me. And then the Olaplex number five, it's the conditioner. Um, I've had this for a year. Look how much I still have. So you're, I'm not using a lot of this stuff, you guys. Um, okay, and then this, I just apply, I don't know if you can see this, it is the number seven bonding oil. I just use this like towards, um, like when I'm close to or do up for washing my hair. That's all I use like on my actual hair, you guys. Other than that, it's very minimal heat, very minimal styling, and not a lot of product buildup. I don't even use dry shampoo because I've seen and heard horror stories about that from my friends who are stylists. The last thing I think really made a difference and really helped was we installed a soft water system. There's a lot of research out there on the internet about this, so I would suggest do your research, but just saying I noticed a huge difference in like the texture and shine of my hair um, after we got the soft water installed. Okay guys, so I hope this helped. I hope this was informational for you. There's not a quick fix to anything that's worth having. You can get extensions, but if your hair is already really fragile and in a bad state, um, I wouldn't suggest it. I went three years without them. I do have one row now and I have three pieces of hair in one row. Just to give you an idea, most people do five to six pieces in a row. I just add it for like a little extra volume because who doesn't want a lot of hair? You know, I went three years with shitty hair, so I feel like I want really good hair now. My sister, plug for her, but she owns a salon in Laguna Beach, DKW Styling, and I do not trust anyone else with my hair. So I went to them back when I felt like my hair was getting healthy. I her a photo, but I love my hair and I love it even without it without me styling it. I just thought it was worth noting and mentioning that health will manifest itself from the inside out. I'm a firm believer and I have such a big passion about health and wellness because I haven't always been healthy. That's why I'm so passionate about it because I feel like this is the healthiest I've ever been. I'm pregnant, my baby's healthy. So anyway, it's a really good feeling and it's so worth all the effort and everything I've done to learn about this hypothyroidism. 
Um, just an update, I actually just went and got my blood tested last week. Um, it's like most pregnant women, actually, they like lower a little bit from their starting just because that's what happens with pregnancy. And she's like, yours are great. All your labs are perfect. So, all right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful and informational. Give it a thumbs up and I'll talk to you later. Bye.